I thought they were making way too many threes. You know, they're four for 25. I guess one of them makes like makes me feel like it was 12 of them. But uh, we did that, and then we did a much better job of playing defense without fouling, as opposed to the way we played Monday night. But uh, uh, again, we're more blessed, and you should win that kind of game. But I think we did gain something from the way we felt after Monday night's game. How pleased are you with Seven's performance and with the way he's coming along? I'm pretty doggone pleased with our point guard position. I'm never going to be satisfied, but if you look down there, all right, so Kobe is 4-2, so that's 12-2 in both spots. Kobe has 11, uh, 7th has 7, so that's 18 points. Uh, I do feel pretty good about that. I want both of them to stay and keep playing, getting better and better. What are you most pleased with 7th? No turnovers. It's an easy deal, guys. So I've been preaching for three years, stay in front of the ball and don't turn the sucker over and you get to play more. It's pretty easy. Do you have any, any update on Kenny? Yeah, I told him he's laid on the floor and he's flopping around like a dead fish. He's in there all fine right now. <laughs> it scared me, there's no question, but it was, he stepped on somebody's foot. And he was in pain, but he's fine right now. He came out to the court. He was coming out as we were coming back in. So I would think that uh, my guess is I'll probably not practice him tomorrow, but uh, I would expect that he'd be able to go by Monday. Did he just roll the ankle? He stepped on somebody's foot. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You, you obviously have these freshmen are talented, but you've given them bigger roles, or they've claimed bigger roles than freshmen have for you the last few years. Are you comfortable with that? I mean, you just talked about you being happy with Kobe. Is he adjust to that and, and the seer off the bench? And, and mm -hmm. like, I mean, you're okay with that? Yeah, I really am. And uh, you know, the reason the freshmen haven't had as big a role as the last few years because all the upperclassmen were better. You know, you had Justin and you had Kennedy and you had Isaiah, uh, Joel, Theo. Nate, all those guys, so that was in front of Tony Bradley, but Tony was huge for us. And then uh, Theo and Joel still out there last year, but uh, uh, so part of it is the talent in front of them is not as big, not as gifted, not as experienced in everything that they've done. But also, those three guys are pretty good. And but I've, I mean, I've started a lot of freshman guys. I mean, people think we just start old guys, but. Uh, we started Bobby Frazier, Marcus Ginyard, Tyler Hansborough, three freshmen after we went in, uh, went in at 05. Uh, uh, started a ton of freshman point guards, but those guys are gifted and uh, uh, they understand the mistakes they're making and trying to do better. I'm, I am I'm comfortable with all three of them. Nasir and uh, Kobe got a lot more ink, but uh, uh, number one's going to be pretty doggone good too. You mentioned taking the rims off the basket to send a message. Mm -hmm. defensive practice. How was the practices after Stanford? We didn't do that. The assistants talked me out of it. I wanted to kill somebody, and so we didn't do it. But we talked about it at halftime that if we played the second half like we played Monday night, that there was a great possibility that the rims wouldn't be on there. And Coach Rob said, you guys do not want to go through that. But on uh, – let's see. We played the game Monday night. Uh, we were off Tuesday. So Wednesday we did um, – Controlled secondary break game. And that's the only thing we did the entire practice. It was offensive. Everything else, everything, was a defensive practice. So. What goes into a defensive practice? Uh, a lot of defensive slides, uh, a lot of quick slides across the lane, zigzag, uh, two-man closeout, things you probably don't – if you guys know what two-man closeout is, I'll be surprised. Uh, but things in your lingo that you talk about, it, I wouldn't know what the crap you're talking about. So. Defense, the easiest thing is they didn't get to shoot the ball. There was a moment in the second half where Sterling got a foul, and Luke kind of took the time to coach him up for a second. How important is Luke's leadership for both the big Luke and Kenny and Cam, them? all three are really good leaders. I like for them to talk to them all the time. I mean, Luke has a shot and saw Nasir. If he'd made a bounce pass, Nasir would have caught it going in, and then it would have been an outrageous duck, and everybody had gone crazy. But he threw it in the air, and Nasir's coming in. So they got to communicate a little better, and that'll come from playing. But uh, no, uh, I think that those three guys are doing a great job of leading a team and, and even talking about a, a practice where we do all defense. And uh, those three guys led the guys through it, talking to them each and every time about we were going to get better today. I mean, but seriously, we did a fast break drill, five on five, and that's the only offensive thing we did. And, and then we ran a, a layup drill that was usually four minutes and 15 seconds. We went nine minutes without stopping. Uh, the rest of it was just four on four to answer the question. Maybe a little bit four on four shell, one on one defense, everything that you can do on the defensive end. Take one more. In a, in a game like this, and, and you got St. Francis on Monday, 
What are you hoping? And you may not even look that far. But what are you hoping? Yeah, I'm glad you told me who we played. <laughs> what are you hoping to learn before you get into the games where you play these ranked opponents? Well, we can show them some clips. I mean, we did uh, an hour and uh, I'm going to guess an hour and 10 minutes worth of tape. The other reason we didn't do anything on offense is we just did half a practice on Wednesday, all defense, and then we went in and watched the tape. I mean, you guys may remember Garrison started to go up and shoot it, and he tried to pass it to Nasir, and it was – they're two feet apart. So we can show those kind of things, and they'll understand more about placing, spacing, because that's the biggest thing. Our, our break tonight was much better because we got better spacing on the break as opposed to two guys running side by side. But if you even go back and – We'll show Nasir, for example, what we're talking about. When uh, it's silly, but I, I say it anyway. If a guy's not in front of you, it means he's behind you. It's pretty simple. He's not selling freaking popcorn. He is behind you. So if you're driven the ball up the court, you should expect someone to come up behind you and knock it loose. But the problem we had that play was Nasir and Kobe running side by side. And so one guy, he, he guarded both of them. He ran up behind him and knocked it loose. So we can do things on the tape and show that to them. That's the old eye in the sky don't lie. They can see it and understand a little bit better about what we're talking about. And today, especially, we can show them where one time, uh, I think it was B. Rob got the ball and Kobe went all the way around behind him and filled the lane. It's the first time we've done that all year. So you can show those kind of things and, again, talk about uh, spacing. Because as Steve said, 29 points on the fast breaks, the most we've had in three years.